Mm -hmm. And so you plan on going back too, right, at some point? Yes, I do. I'm hoping to shoot for November, and uh, I want to stay longer this time and to continue the internship a little bit longer. So I'm hoping to stay for about a year and uh, hopefully go back. I need to get a missionary visa, and I'll probably end up teaching English or art through the church. Mm, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what's like the percentage of Christians you would say is in Japan? I don't think even one, is it even 1% or? Nope, it's 0.8%. Uh, oh, really? Yep. Hmm. So it's getting close to 1%, but it's still pretty low. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of interesting because I know they have a, a good automobile industry, yeah. and you know what I mean? And yeah, um, most of the country is uh, Shintoism and Buddhism, mm. but even like we've asked people sometimes when we go, like they've just started doing that just out of habit because that's how they grew up, mm -hmm. and like some people have even said that they don't even really believe in it anymore but they just do it out of habit because it's what they've done most of their life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So as a missionary going to Japan, what would you say like your vision is to, to reach out to the people and that they would, they would see God's love through you? What kind of, are you, do you work in any form of arts or anything like that? Yeah, um, I actually uh, work in prophetic art Mm, so that's um, cool being able to see visions that god has for certain people and words for certain people and, and being able to express that in a visual art form mm. is really nice because uh it, it really impacts people oh yeah because it's not just you know receiving a word but you're actually receiving something that like visual that you can see every day that god has gifted them so mm -hmm. um what I really want to do when I go back is to just uh, keep showing God's love to people and letting them know that, you know, this it, God is here to as a redeemer and he's going to redeem you and lift you up and everything that you have gone through mm -hmm. is the past and it's on the cross and it's covered in his blood and you're forgiven for it. So I really just I want to show God's love. Mm-hmm. So do you know any other people that have kind of like a ministry like you to, and maybe you could give some examples of some people you may know that have a different approach to reaching the people, you know, because it's a new generation we live in, yeah. and you know what I mean? And they're very much into technology, they're into animation, you know, yeah. and you know what I mean? Yeah, um, there's at New Day, we actually have a prophetic art team, and uh, my sister Heather Hayes and uh, um, Chloe Yaros, they all definitely flow in the spirit of prophetic. So uh, we started a prophetic team there and just doing artwork and reaching out to people through art and letting them know, like, you know, there is more to life than what, what we go through every day. Um, but yeah, like there's, uh, some other forms of, uh, just reaching out to people that I've seen. There's actually mm. a manga that we found in Japan that was mm. about the New Testament. So it was really cool. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So what are like the Japanese Bibles like? Do, how, how is the writing and do they read from like left to right or is it, I don't know. What, can you tell us something about the... Japanese alphabet. <laughs> yeah, um, there's actually like different forms of it. There's hiragana and katakana, and then mm. there's kanji. Uh, it, they're all symbols. So hiragana is uh, actually the Japanese language, mm. and then katakana is um, like taking a foreign book, like a, an American writer, and then turn it into Japanese symbols. Mm. So that'd be katakana. And then kanji is just like there are phrases and there are sentences in just one symbol. And uh, they actually read right to left, so it's backwards from here. And at first it's a little difficult getting used to, but um, it's really interesting. And when they're writing in kanji, it's, it, uh, it's vertical instead of horizontal. Mm -hmm. 
but there's also like besides symbols they have regular uh english alphabet and that's called romanji mm -hmm. so it's uh basically the english alphabet but just uh written in japanese so mm. And I know that God, he has a plan for every human being's life. And, and on the, nobody has the same fingerprints. And there's a blueprint, an overall plan that God has people, for people's lives. And with the culture and the people in Japan, do you see any ministries and how God could use some of the Japanese people to reach other Japanese people for the gospel of Jesus Christ in the future? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, one thing that we've noticed is that a lot of the Japanese males mm. uh, are a little bit more hesitant in going to church and mm. uh, changing their ways because they're a very, like, honorable society and they like to stick with, like, their uh, kind of the ancient ways in a sense. Mm. But when some of the Japanese men at the church start to express like what they've been going through and uh reach out to other men like you'll start to see like oh like they're becoming interested in like god and coming to church just to see like why their life is changing and like how they're able to just be more expressive mm -hmm. so uh, like you can definitely see like um the japanese men like a very strong influence on others Mm. because they are not very expressive and they keep to themselves and they don't say no to a lot of things but when someone starts to break away and see positive influence and change in their lives then that starts to influence other people like other Japanese men around them and families mm. and of course with being a Christian the Holy Spirit has different ministries for each human being, multiple ministries with different personalities of people. Did you, do you know of any Japanese people that are being uniquely used by the Holy Spirit in this time in Japan that are Christian people that's like sort of a, a birth or a new start of what, what's going to happen in Japan as far as the gospel getting proclaimed? Yeah. And a, at a higher level there, did you, do you know of any people like that? Yeah. Or could you give an example? Yeah, um, because we, I went there to uh, help start like a prophetic team and prophetic art team too. And there's uh, one uh, young man there, his name's Soichi. Mm. And I actually started like teaching him and... Uh, showing him like different ways to work in prophetic art and mm. just seeing and hearing some of his words that God's giving him, even mm -hmm. just the prophetic, like it's powerful. It's really powerful. It's really mm. good. And you can definitely see like God's ready to just start flowing through the people there. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it is really amazing just to hear like, cause he's 16 and mm. in high school and, he's just willing to just let God like work in his life and reach out to others mm -hmm. so that willingness that some of them to just kind of let go of society there I think God's really going to just be opening that door up more and just let his spirit flow through them awesome yeah. so have you ever found with because of the culture in Japan if, if a person's going to become a Christian, they'd become a Christian 100% with everything they have or they don't do it at all because there's so much of a passion on the people. Did you see that at all amongst any of the people there? Maybe even more so than in the United States. Did you notice that? or? Yeah, actually, um, some of the new Christians there will be a lot more on fire. Their passion is really strong and... Uh, they will just kind of go all out and they'll burn a lot of their altars that they had for their ancestors and uh, get rid of a lot of their lucky charms in their houses because you, you want to like really just kind of cleanse the spirit cl cleanse the spirit and cleanse uh, the house that they live in and get all the evil and kind of demonic things out of there and mm. they're willing to 
mm -hmm. then there's also there's always kind of the people that will kind of reframe because they're scared because mm. I've heard stories where people were scared to take out the lucky charms in their houses and burn their altar to proclaim like God's glory because they didn't know what was going to happen and they still kind of had that false faith and just uh, physical and s charms and stuff like that in their lives. Mm -hmm. And when you were there, did you feel like a spiritual atmosphere of like heaviness? Did the spiritual atmosphere feel different than it did in the United States at all? Yeah, it definitely did. You could tell like there was just a little bit more heavy spirit of just kind of uh, dishonor and shame in a sense because they a lot of the people there just really want to honor each other and mm. um, when they don't then it's just kind of like it crushes them in a sense. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a heavier spirit there. Okay. And I'd also like to add, we're going to put a caption up on the bottom of the screen of where you could donate to help the people of Japan. And a lot of people have asked me, if you believe in a God, Jesus Christ, of love and compassion, why is there so much suffering in the world? But the truth is that the man that was the most innocent suffered the most so that the most guilty could be as if totally innocent, totally forgiven. And that's the story of why Jesus died on the cross for the sins of all the peoples of the earth. And Jesus loves all humanity on the face of the earth. And when he hung on the cross, he gave his blood to wash away the sins of all humanity. And when he hung on the cross, he hung there and he, would, and he was naked. And at that time, that was the highest form of humiliation for a Hebrew man. And he did that because of his amazing love for people for, of every nation of the earth. And he did that, and that's what they, the Greek word agape is. That's God's love. And God demonstrated his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And to know Jesus personally, we have to receive him into our hearts as our Lord and Savior. And Jesus is a loving God and he's a compassionate God. And he waits in silence in his love for humanity to come to him. And in Revelation 22:17, it says, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And he who hears say, Come. And let the thirsty come, and he who desires, let him take freely the water of life. Will you come to Jesus? Will you open the door of your heart to receive Jesus as your Savior? Let's pray and repeat after me and really mean it from your heart and realize you're taking on the mark of Jesus into your inner being and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. Forgive me for all and any sins. And I thank you that your blood washes away all and any of my sins that I've committed. And I have a clear conscience. And thank you for eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll also pray for the nation of Japan. And I'll pray for the viewers here. And... Uh, Lord Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would be with the people of Japan. I pray that you would protect them, and I pray that the people of Japan would see Christians that are being used as channels of streams of living water to show God's love towards the people in this nation. And I pray for the people watching this show that you would give them the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work of a Christian here on this earth. And we thank you for eternal life. And we thank you that all the promises are of the Bible are ours once we receive Jesus as our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.